Can we light it up? Can we get the... Yeah, we can, can make we it blink. That? Sure. No siren, you said, right? No, I, I, I can... Whatever yeah, you want. Hey, oh, let's, come on. Let's, let's have a whole let's, ball of wax. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here with uh, Zach from Model PD. Uh, that would be police department, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. That's, okay. That's the play on words. That's great. Okay. <laughs> well, Zach has brought us today his uh, his version of a Tesla uh, a Tesla police car, and it's complete with the light bar, and it says police, but the big problem is this one right here. What the heck? It says not in service. Uh, <laughs> What do you do about that? Well, if, if we need to, ah. we can always rip that off. Yeah. In case well, we need to do something. There you go. Well, there you are. <laughs> so bad people can be arrested by, uh, by Zach if he cho chooses. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you got going on here and, um, you know, what, uh, how you came to, uh, came into this business. Well, um, I've been in uh, police cars for about, 20 years or so um, in them well <laughs> back seat or front seat <laughs> every seat underneath inside um but um yeah is when it comes to building police vehicles i've obviously the legacy ford chevy and dodge vehicles uh forever but um we started doing these uh, we started working on this back in 2019 um it was it was coming we could see it coming the ev was going to be a push in the municipalities and especially in the police departments. Uh, there's already police departments across the country that are, are already mandated that they're not allowed to buy anything other than EVs. And they're just having problems being able to fill that need uh, to have an EV police vehicle that's actually a true police package vehicle. Uh, so what we did is we start with a long range Model Y and then it goes through a conversion process to create the police package version of the Model Y. So that's where the name Model PD comes from, uh, because generally the police package vehicles have a different name. So for instance, Ford is based on the Ford Explorer, but the actual police package is called a police interceptor utility. So the things that make the police cars a lot different than the retail cars are things like the wheels. They have to have steel wheels. Goodyear makes specific tires and Firestone makes specific tires for police package uh, vehicles. Um, all the Model PD vehicles have a solid carbon fiber roof instead of a glass roof because that's required to mount all the myriad of antennas and lighting and license plate reader cameras, all those kind of things. And then you also need to have a headliner to be able to run all those cablings through on the inside of the vehicle. Um, you need extra dome lights because the dome lights that are generally in the vehicles aren't powerful enough for police use. Um, what we also do, if you check out the, the front and rear, uh, we integrate the red and blue lighting into the headlights, taillights, fog lights, uh, all over the place. Uh, we were really trying to create a nice aesthetic because a lot of times on regular police cars they're just having to mount lights into the fascia or on the side of the sheet metal and we were really trying to create a much cleaner look. Uh, it's also really great in detective cars or um, unmarked vehicles because you don't have to see the LEDs, they're completely hidden in the lights. And they obviously do flash. I just have them on steady right now, so it's easier for the camera to pick up. Yeah. Um, well, one thing uh, the <laughs> the one thing that's uh, good about this type of a police car is there's nothing going to outrun you. Um, you you can outrun a, a Ferrari if you want to. Yeah. So, the officers uh, these are really are really 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 fast, and that's one of the reasons I would have thought that uh, that the police departments would be very interested. They could stop a um, you know, high speed chase in about a minute. Um, this thing is uber fast. Uh, we have we have one of these and um, 
I'm, I'm just, I've, I've always been hugely impressed, so. Yeah, yeah, and when we test drive it with officers there that have never been in them, they're really surprised. Yeah. It's a, it's a learning experience for them because they get behind the wheel and realize, oh, Teslas can just get away from me if they wanted to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And because the, the traditional legacy vehicles just don't have the uh, get yeah. up and go to, to keep up. The power, so, yeah. Good question too. So sure. uh, just coming from the defense side of the house, what else are you doing to beef up this? I can see this being obviously used for uh, obviously local police, but also military police. Uh, and then I could see maybe an application for future, maybe in uh, some light, light tactical vehicles uh, in the military. What else are you doing to like beef it up to make it a little more uh, robust? Well, right now this is what we're referring to as phase one. Uh, we've got multiple phases of, of improvements lined up. Uh, right now, phase one was really to just create a, a basic police package that would be usable for anyone across the country um, as a patrol car, not just an admin car or something like that. It, it could be a full service patrol car. Um, things that are on the roadmap are things like uh, ballistic door panels and um, possibly shields and things like that that are incorporated into the vehicle. Um, ballistic firewalls because you don't have an engine in front like you normally uh, would in a in a nice vehicle so theoretically someone could shoot straight through if they had a high enough power weapon um, so what what's in the front now what are you using for is that right now any... the front is is just stock there's there's nothing oh, really in the, in the front so where did you put all the electronics and whatnot? I That's figured. all in the interior. There's a bay that we created uh, specifically for the electronics equipment. Now, this is one that we play with a lot, so it's a little yeah. messy. So don't feel like this is uh, the oh, common layout. That's a That's pretty good. But uh, right now I just have a regular laptop in there uh, because the computer system actually runs through the main display of the vehicle. Mm. So right now I have my laptop in there. Normally we would have a um, vehicle mounted computer that would stay with the vehicle. Um, so does this mean that you only got like you can only take one crook at a time or something? Yeah. Well most departments do not transport more than one person in the same car generally. Oh, really? huh. Now that's not to say no one does that but it's very common they don't want to have two people in the back whether it's them communicating or causing trouble it's just easier to keep them separated uh, and most departments are looking for more space for stuff more than people yeah because even in departments that have tahos which are gigantic on the inside they're still filling those up so some departments just have a, a an insane amount of equipment to deal with yeah um, it's it's kind of like an empty table you know if you have a flat surface somebody will find somebody something to put on it right yeah <laughs> so the tesla even offers more space because of the front option and then obviously the trunk too then yes and because we remove so much out of the vehicle um i it's a little it's slightly less interior space than uh, the Ford Interceptor utility, but it's just that it's configured so much differently mm. that it doesn't look like it would be able to hold the same amount of equipment, but it's well, this, just uh, shaped a lot differently. Yeah, this, this thing really and truly does have um, a lot of room. Uh, the Model Y is uh, probably uh, my favorite Tesla for normal people. I mean, uh, and with the seats folded, you can see here now that this will go right around the corner once you've got uh, once you've got a cap on there. If you're not going to be transporting more than one person, this is huge, uh, actually. So yeah, generally, if they're going to transport more than one, they'll they'll call a, a van or a paddy wagon or something like that, or mm. um, a specific car that's made specifically for transport. Oh, look, uh, Brad's going to get arrested and <laughs> exactly. show us how it's done. Yeah, very good. And this the, is heavy duty. Well, 
It doesn't actually have a retractor. Okay. This cinches down to... Oh. So when I cinch this down, there's nothing for you to work out of. Oh, that's right. I should have these behind my back. Right. Nor <laughs> but hey, nor you, look, you look familiar with it. Can you do that again? <laughs> but normally the vehicles have, you know, a regular seatbelt will have a retractor so you could start to work out of it. Oh. With this, since there's no retractor, sense. it's locked in place and you can't move forward or backward if you wanted to. Mm. Um, but, uh, and then whatever. <laughs> You just unsnap so is it, it. Is it comfortable, Brad? Uh, it's it's not that comfortable, but it's a seat. Ah, ah okay, good, <laughs> good. And most people aren't generally concerned with the comfort because obviously it's a. Uh, well, I noticed prisoner, that you. But yeah, well, at the end of the day, this is also interesting. Um, yeah, this is for the guy that's puking or peeing himself. Yeah, very good. Not as comfortable, perhaps, as the normal rear seat, but uh, probably a lot easier to clean. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about, is, is cleaning. Uh, and yeah. also to prevent stashing of contraband, because if you had a regular OEM seat, you could shove stuff between, yeah. even with your hands cuffed. Um, so that's, if you look in any traditional ICE vehicle, police vehicles, the majority of them now have aftermarket seats that are some kind of a hard plastic right. that completely yeah. seal up yeah. uh, everything in the back seat. Yeah. And then uh, we've got the, the screens, kind of the big piece on the inside um, where you can switch between your Tesla driving screen and kill that. So here's your on your traditional Tesla driving screen. You can flip a switch and now you can be on your Windows desktop. Which I haven't logged into yet. So now you can have your police computer here as well as your driving screen. But obviously normally your your speedometer and everything, your turn signals, indicators always show up in this area. But obviously if I'm on my Windows desktop, I can't see that information. So that's why we put a secondary display up here on the dash so that when you're driving, you can still see your speed, your turn signals, what gear you're in, all those things. So you can still safely drive the car uh, even if you're on your Windows desktop. Hmm. Zach, what has been your hardest thing to integrate? Has it been the software here or more hardware or a little bit of both? Um, this is definitely a very, complicated component uh, the screen I would say is probably one of the most difficult parts um, beyond that um, the roof probably was the second really? most okay. difficult just because it's constantly and that's the reason why it's carbon fiber right now because we keep tweaking and changing and and once we lock in a design that may change over to aluminum uh, just for scale, um, but right now it's uh, carbon fiber and then all the flooring will be replaced so it's not uh, carpet because carpet tends to get a little gross in police cars. Mm. This one in particular um, is supposed to have window and door armor on the prisoner door. We just haven't uh, got that in this one yet because I'm out driving it around trying to show everybody. Uh, we've been having people call us for months uh trying to get us to come out and show it and that's part of why we were glad that you guys could let us do this because we've got people on all the coasts that want us to come out and it's just, it's just hard to get to yeah. see everybody yeah well the easiest way to do the floor is just spray the thing i mean um, uh, the same stuff that they use for pickup boxes and stuff like that well yeah, that's that was... that's essentially what these are yeah um so it, it worked out pretty well and that should last a long time. So, um, are you uh, are you gonna step up and move into like that? Well, that's the goal. After we get these uh, churning out of the facility, we want to start the R and D work on the Cybertruck to turn that into a police vehicle. Right now, the the price point on the Cybertruck is gonna be a little prohibitive, but we're hoping by the time the R and D work is complete, that maybe 
that'll start to come down or the, the lower priced models will be available. Uh, but right now the price on this is almost uh, exactly comparable to the price of the traditional ICE police vehicles. So it well, works it out should, well. It should be because now we're under a hundred bucks per kilowatt hour. And that's kind of like, that's where we, we see the, if you have a standard V6 with a engine and transmission and all the other stuff that goes along with it um, versus something like that, the price point is the same from a piece cost standpoint. So speaking of range, how much extra weight have you added with all the additional add-ons? Uh, we are pretty close to the factory weight. I don't, really? I can't remember the number off the top of my head. Seats. Because we've um, taken out so much uh, OEM equipment and most of ours is aluminum instead of okay. steel. You know, a lot of the paneling is. The bracketry is, is steel. Um, so everything that we've put in is pretty close to the same amount of weight as we took out. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Um, can we light it up? Can we get the... Yeah, we can, can make we it blink. That? Sure. No siren, you said, right? No, I, I, I can... Whatever you yeah, want. Let's, oh, come on, let's, let's hear it here. Let's, ball of wax. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Everybody comes straight out of their buildings. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck's going on? Oh, they finally caught us. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to yeah. be that loud. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it'll move some people. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a the good one time. thing. The one thing good about the cyber truck is it's really, really quiet, so you won't have any uh, any police officers going deaf. <laughs> I mean, that thing is like a tomb inside. You can't hear anything around you. So well, that's that's next on the list. So yeah, excited to get that going. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm pretty sure that this means I should wrap it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, Zach, thank you very much for coming and bringing thank it down. You, sir. Thank Thanks, you, Brad. Sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And thank you for watching, everybody. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more stuff.